the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. We absolutely adore this lady. She's an author, educator, comedian, and parenting <laughs> and resilience specialist. Her name is Maggie Dent. She joins us now. Maggie! Maggie! Welcome. Do you know the thing about Maggie Dan? It's impossible to get enough. You just <laughs> yeah. everybody has an insatiable appetite for Maggie Dan. She's like a she's like a a, a barrel or a, a Pringles. A pr- yes. Yeah. You just want more. Once, once you pop, you can't you stop. You can't stop. Oh my you god! Just want more. That's, we should call you Pringle. No, That's your nickname. No, apparently some other mums tell me that it needs to be a tonic in the fridge with gin in it. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm going to have a bit of Maggie. Yeah, a bit oh, of Maggie. Cool my jets. Yes. yes. Just yeah. a dent it. No, a I've chips. been looking forward to meeting you, Maggie, because the boys do speak um, very highly of well, you. Well, the thing is, every time Tommy will say, hey, great news, guys, Maggie Dent's coming in, your mind just fills with questions, yeah. what you personally want to g- talk yeah. to Maggie about. What are you getting at the moment, Maggie? And we're going to talk about your new podcast, uh, yeah. The Good Enough Dad. Is it about dads at the moment? Is that where your focus is? Yeah, I think so, because... Um, I mean, women, let's just generalisation, sweepingly, you know, every now and then there's a guy that does read a parenting book. Um, but they are constantly, like, let's lead up to the birth of a baby. Yep. They are read, like, six or seven books. Yeah. They've been chewing their sisters and mums and you know, their girlfriends and they've just got them yep. all over and And much info. As and dads turn up too going, info. <clears throat> yeah, you're exactly right, Kate. And then dads turn up saying, let's just get into this, right? And then... They can get absolutely knocked sideways yep. because it's such a big thing. Mm. The big thing they keep telling me is my heart. I just couldn't believe what happened in my heart. And then I just felt useless. Yep. Because you didn't know, you what, know what to yeah. do, yeah. whether it's breastfeeding or, or not. Or, That's right. And, you know, when some of them say, look, I still feel like a failure, Maggie, when I've been walking the floor with that baby yeah. that I can't settle at three in the morning. And I'm going, that happens to me as a nanny, mate. Yeah. yeah. But I don't take it. No. Right, because there's that conditioning of guys. You got to get it right. You got to exactly. be the loudest, the biggest, the best, the first. So they do take those things. That's why I wanted to keep reassuring them. Yeah. Good enough. Can Good you, enough. Can I think you... that's important, isn't it, Fitz? Can I just jump in quickly yeah, yeah. here? Go for it. Because I think oh, I don't. I don't want this to be a what about us. No. But I feel the pressure on the modern day dad is bigger than ever before. Yeah. You got to be the all rounder. <laughs> And you've got yeah. to be able to, to earn the crust. You know, you've got the traditional role, which still exists for the male. But then you've got to be able to do the other mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And not taking it away from anything the mother does, but the dad's role has evolved. Oh, best, best social change ever in Australia. And I wouldn't have it any other way. And, and most dads won't, which is why I keep on wanting to reassure them that your dad might have not been the dad that you want to be. And... You might not read parenting books, but every now and then if your female partner wants to tag you in something, read it. Yeah, yeah. Because in there is something that she really wants you to come on board with as a team player. And that is the concept. You're exactly right. But the conditioning again for dads is I'm the fixer. My job's to fix and yeah. stop problem stuff. Problem solver. I'm the problem solver. Well, you know what? Parenting there's some days, crap happens. Yep. yep. And there's no solution for mums or dads, and you haven't failed them. And that's that's a big message. Can you reassure me? Can I? Can you give me an exercise? Right, you start. Mate. Okay. Because okay, here we go. I'll yeah, sit this one go. out. As a mum, I'll sit this <laughs> no, one. No, no, Kate. This this might help with you as well yeah. as a as a parent. Write this down, Kate. And, and I heard you talking about May the other day, but. Okay, so we get up very early in the morning. Our day uh, consists of in the afternoon you hit a wall, not just once, probably twice. I, I've cut sleeps out. Naps stuff me around with my sleeping at night. But there's a moment like in the afternoon the boys come home and like you said, they go from rules at school and they come home and they want to wrestle and play with their willies. Yes. Um, and do you know what? I, having th- fun. There are yeah. moments where I am so frustrated and I'm so tired and I need to pay Patience in my life because I can crack any second. Give me something. What do I do? Can I have an exercise that I can do to walk away and then to walk into that situation again with a totally different outlook? Oh, the first thing you do is you just put your hands up and go, guys, remember dad's a bit tired? Yep. Just just, just warn Be you. honest with them. Yeah, look, I'm a bit tired. Yeah. So what I might do is just go sit outside for a while, you know, because really that wrestling is it's never fatal. Yep. It's just exactly what they do because they like their brother, even yep. though you think they don't. Yep. We just let it roll. Yep. But you step yourself aside a bit, right? Make yourself a cup of tea, eat a Tim Tam, just cool your jets outside for yeah. a bit. If there's some blood, they'll come find you. Yes. But I need you to know that this is part of this my life. This is how life. I feel, yeah. yes. And it's okay. okay. I keep saying... Can you model how you manage your big, ugly feelings? Because mm. how else are your kids going to 
You know, like mums can do it the same. Oh, God, I'm going to lose my whatever. Hang on, I'm going to go to my bedroom just for a few moments. Yep. I do recommend you have a really good block of fruit and nut chocolate. Because that. oh, that's hidden a health food hidden in the bedroom. <laughs> Nail that. That's a health and food. And then some deep breathing. Nice. And I guarantee you reset with serotonin. You come back out and you're now going to be able to be the parent you, you want to be. You can go on again. Okay. Kate, to break up the dad love, a question from you from a mother's point of view. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Where on. do I start? Yeah. We all have them. I, I think what I'm finding challenging at, at the moment is how uh, – my daughter is nine and I don't know if it's hormonal um, – but is it's it just big, ve- it, Maggie, well, it's old? just it's just very hard um, to get her to do what I want her to oh, really? what I want her to do. Really? And my mum and dad parented very um, differently, strict, and, and, and well, strict. I, much stricter. Yeah. Um, and we'd get a smack, you know. And mm-hmm. we well, obviously I don't do that in mm-hmm. in our home. But there are some times where I'm thinking, oh, now it all makes sense why my mum and why the house was so mm. loud, why my parents were yelling, why we got a smack. Like, how do you? How, how What's do you the reason? How do you reason with a with a nine year old? Okay, and or do you a, just not? There's a few things going on because she's a tween, right? And this is an interesting window. Just let me drop that there, yeah. really, because all the stuff's starting to change. Yeah. Which is the growth towards autonomy. It's a bit like the toddler wants autonomy, my way, me do. Yep. Yeah, she's doing that too, except little bit of steroids underneath. Yeah. Okay, so that whole notion of behaviorism, which says if you don't punish them. You'll you have a crap kid. Yes. Um, and also, if you don't praise and over reward and reward them, then they you know for what they do that's good. That works for rats. Right. Okay. Right. right. But you're also conditioned, and that's why I'm a good person. No, you could be a good person without punishment. Yes. yes. But discipline. So discipline is where I walk in with my swagger and I go, "We don't do this in this house. Put that down." Yep. And yep. then we go, "Come on, let's zoom outside." So we go firm. Hold the boundary, yeah. and if they need to erupt around it, great. But my other thought to it is don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Because if you're always walking in with swagger, yes. where's the connection? Yeah. Where's the love? Where's the joy? And sometimes it's point. just being totally... I had to be a comedian with four boys. Yeah. Right? Yes. You know, they... They wouldn't listen to you well, otherwise. Well, I knew they... No, I'm wired that way. I yeah. also know that they're, they're wired not to listen, but I also know that our girls are equally wired to... Oh, Mum's just going to go on and on, and yeah. she says it all the time. Coming up to them, you know, rubbing their back in their shoulder and going, yep, it's time. That plate, sink. Yeah. It's going oh, now. Yeah. I'm gonna we're we're going to do that now. And I'm going to direct you. Yep. Mm. Yeah, and I'm, you know, and that's kind of... It, it seems little, Yeah. but you've got to remember our kids are dealing What's in a very build? different world. Hey. Like you talk about that being little, say, plate now. Yeah. Yep. If you continue to do those things, yep. it builds and can correct itself oh, in a the sense. The bottom line is I want, to, I want them to come on board with me and be on the journey with us. Not I'm directing your journey. It's we on we, this journey. Yeah. So sometimes it's, so what, do I ha- what do we have to do for you to remember to put your plate in the sink? Hey? Right. What do, you, what do we have to do? We're working yeah. together here. Rather than me always pointing there going, you need to do that and you haven't done yeah. that and you have to do this. and Because they just learn to zone that voice out. Yes. Well, like like you do with other, but you know, you if do. you've got someone nagging you like all the Tom, time, like, you and I can, you learn voice. not to hear that, hear that voice but or, not, or that tone. Not a person on the planet that likes being told what to do. Yeah. Correct. Same as it, nobody tell me to calm down. Yeah. Right. So same thing. So yeah. what am I doing? Am I requesting in a way that's kind of like. You know what I talk to mm. my best friend or mate about? Yeah, or am I like, speaking to you down? Yeah, at you? I like your idea, and you, you said it with Fitz as well yep. that it's more uh, with with dads as part of the family, yep. and then you're talking about like mums and kids. Yep. Is that working together and and being the team perhaps is the objective? Because ah. it's so hard. You second guess everything all yeah. of the time. Am I doing the right thing? Am I being too strict? Am I trying? Yeah. A, am I not being strict enough? Because then you've got say the older generation who yes. thinks that you should be stricter with oh. your kids oh. and yeah. that they're not going to respect you and they, they're they spoiled and they get too much. And now you can see much. why, um, you know, so can I show the slight difference between mums and dads like when you go to bed at night? Yeah. Because the singular focus of most males means I'm going to go to bed to go to sleep and you go to bed and you go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. I, so I'm, the mum comes to bed to go yeah. to sleep. But we're biologically wired to make sure that we're caring really well because of oestrogen. So we'll go through 
every decision we made during the day from, you know, breakfast right through. Is not that only right? that, well, my God, they didn't eat enough broccoli. She said, well, did I have enough of that in the lunchbox? That's and a then female we, well, thing, isn't it's it? It's a female thing. And then we second guess and we beat ourselves up. And then we suddenly we're wondering if they'll get into university. And then we've gone back <laughs> and regret something we did at our 21st. And then we've come forward to the kids again, comparing to somebody else. Oh, my God. Then we've gone, oh, my God, my eyebrows, I'll need to put that in. There's a load of washing in the... Am I, have I got it, Kate? Yeah. Right, and about one o'clock in the morning. Oh. Kate's final, getting emotional. Yeah, this, this, is, stress getting this emotional. is the that mum so brain. Stressful. This is the mental load we carry for the people we Sorry. love. Sorry, Kate, to do that. I absolutely hear that. Yeah. So what I want sometimes is for our dads to recognise that we're just... It, it's just we're wired different. Okay, and, gotcha. But we want the dads to be able to jump in sometimes and go, I've got yeah. this, got this, love. Yeah, I've got did this they, back yeah. off. What that, about did, with mums and dads? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. In did different they, houses. Did that strike a chord, though, Kate? Oh, did it? Just the, like, yes. the, yeah, head, the mind games. Head, the yes. inner dialogue that yeah. doesn't go ever away. stop, that doesn't ever end. Yeah. 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 And I think the other thing about mums and dads is that... <laughs> When dads decide to go to bed, or the male, you know, the part, oh. the male partner, he will just go to bed. Yeah, and go, I do, whereas, I do. whereas mums turn all the lights out, yeah, make sure the back clothes. door is um, locked, make sure, and then yeah. and then sometimes the dad's lying in the bed and all the lights are on in yeah. the house. It's like, what? is this no. bedtime? Do you know what? I, 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 I'm, Single focus. I'm yeah. the opp- I'm ADHD with locking all the doors oh, and the windows. So nice. I, no, but I do that. But okay, I am on, honestly at nine o'clock on the dot. That's it. I'm going to bed. Stuff you all. Yeah. You, you, you haven't cleaned your teeth. I don't care what you're doing. Give me a kiss. I'm going to but bed. But I think that's a skill to be able to do yeah. that because There's mums... To switch off like that. Because mums, I think, and this is generalising yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. mums won't do that, but then they'll blame everyone for not being able yeah. to do it. Yes. Yeah. I didn't get to go to bed when you did. Yeah. The Whereas resentment. You do, yeah, you do have to be a little bit... or or ma- bubbles. So being can you see sometimes. why sometimes... Cool. Um, and I know this sounds really crazy, yeah. but we know there's a distinct difference between the memory capacity of males and females. And so sometimes when I'm when I'm talking about for dads, like, oh, Maggie, I'm, I'm, I was doing lunches and I mucked up, I forgot this bit, and I went, what can really work is that can mum actually have a photograph of the lunchbox on the fridge yeah. for the days he has to step up? Yeah. Because I know you told me last week, but I can't remember what that box is, and oh, she's Correct. run out of that. What do I put? So once again, it, it, it's a bit like Bandit going to the pool, right? Yeah. Yep. And he just forgot the sunscreen and the <laughs> drinks and the snack and the yeah. towel, and he's gone with a great joy of love to connect with his kids. But sometimes, not all days, but sometimes we need a better help. Can we do that without going, Yes. You know, know send a text picture of the pasta sauce you like. Yep. Right, because yep. they just go, oh, okay, pasta sauce, any one of those. Yeah. But us girls. God, you're not telling me men and women are different, are you? <laughs> um, Maggie, we've had a, a lot of people ringing in. They want to chat to you. We've got Danielle, who's listening via the Nova Play app down at um, down in Tasmania. You there, Danielle? Yes. Hello. Oh, you've Hi, got Danielle. Maggie here. Go, Danielle. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Um, so my question is, um, unfortunately, we lost my mum three months ago. So the boy's grandma, she was only 59, so a, a young grandma. Yeah, I'm sorry, Danielle. Um, thank you. Um, it's been really tough. Like, sort of, it was a short illness, so it happened really quickly. Um, so a bit of a shock to all of us, especially my kids, who are um, eight and five. Um, so we still mention grandma a lot, but they don't tend to bring her up or um, sort of say anything. So I was just wondering whether, like, obviously if that's normal or, like, if I should be, you know, bringing her yeah. up more often. Yeah. First, I'll give you a great big Maggie hug over the airwaves, okay? Mm, thank you. Um, yeah. Are they boys? Yes, two boys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they don't do it good. Right, no. there's a whole different way. Not only have, they haven't consciously forgotten, but there's this pain in their heart that that when they think of it. So, to and I've got heaps of these resources online because I worked in death and dying for a long time. Can I just offer you a suggestion? You get a great big blowing up picture of grandma and stick yeah. it somewhere where they can um, sometimes maybe not not light a candle because I'll burn the house down, but um, <laughs> put some flowers. But what they do is come in and chat to her yeah. like they would have. Like, tell her things that happen during the day. And it actually keeps her in their mind sight because we're not good, not good around loss and grief. And it's one of those areas that I have worked really, really closely with. But we need to tell them that the the reason we feel sad is because we loved and not to avoid the pain. And that the, mm. how the pain goes is by talking and sharing and loving. And that that's exactly what happens when we lose something we love. 
And it's one of the, you know, I've been known for a long time to suggest families with children under five to get the guinea pig because in stroking the guinea pig, they develop a bond and then hopefully it'll die. And then when it dies, Mm. we have the lessons around death, Mm. not just a, a storybook, they're actually feeling it and then what are we doing are we beautifully respectfully putting the body somewhere are we talking about how much they brought into our life so we're setting up a template for what you have just gone through so Mm. it's absolutely quite normal and remember they do puddle hopping in grief they'll do little pockets and then be sad and then but of course we can't put it down so um does that make some sense Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it would be hard to. I, I mean, and I'm only assuming this, um, Danielle. If it was your mum, the mm. boys might um, know that this has caused their mum a lot yes. of sadness. Yeah. And, yeah, and they see me sad quite often. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah and I don't think mm. that any child yeah. wants to see mum or dad. Yeah. So, you, so give so them agency in that. So yeah. if you see mum sad, grab the tissues. Mm. You can get mummy a drink of water or you can come and sit yeah. next to mummy and hold her rather than mummy has to hide in the bedroom. Yeah. Because yeah. then yeah, we're, t- yeah. we're teaching them how we bring comfort and that's the agency we want to teach all our children as they grow forward because that's then they're doing idea. something yeah. that helps mummy feel Completely. better rather, rather than, than feel avo- powerless. Avoid but then they, avoid. Can, they can still talk to Nan. Absolutely. They can go up to yep. Nan and have a chat to Absolutely. her on their own. Because they don't need mum around. Other, yes. Yep. It's, she's still in their lives. Yeah. And it's okay to be sad too. I totally. think it's important for them to see that mm. you're sad totally. too, Danielle. Don't feel bad. Danielle, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. That's been great. Thank you yeah, so much. Well done. Lisa's called through from Leppington. Lisa, a question for Maggie Dent? Yes, hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Of course. Um, so I'm trying to get through this without being upset myself. Um, my husband has recently left um, myself and um, my my middle child she's finding it very difficult my um, daughter's school keeps calling like once a week and says that she gets very upset at school and that um, she's just crying like all day Um, so he left a couple of months ago and every week I seem to be getting a phone call that Mm. she's upset I don't don't think she's coping very well do you have any advice on what Yes. We should be doing. So she's grieving too, isn't she? Right? Yeah. And yeah. so we've got a we can do connection and it's almost like having a death without without a body. Right? So he's left and left this great big space. Yep. So one of the things we talk about is um, if she can have something that makes it feel her dad is close to her, even though he's not. So can you find a really special photo and laminate it that's in her pocket? Can he write a note if he has, you know, he's not completely ostracized that tells her how much he loves her that she can have with her so she can check in on it during the day because that's mm. at the moment there's this, just this void and sadness and of course what happens in grief we just want what we had that we can't necessarily have and of yeah. course I'm wondering does she do this at home with you or is this is just because she's away from you as her safe comforter mm. is there someone in that school environment that can become you by extension we call it secondary attachment so if she feels sad if it's not her teacher, is there an aide? Is there a you know, lady a in the front office? Mm. Someone who mm. can be the hugger and the reassurer so that her nervous system can come down enough that she doesn't need to be bursting into tears. She can be sad and then still function. Do that, any of those yeah, suggestions right. might be helpful. Yeah, okay. All okay. right. Do you still have, would, would he do that, Lise? Do you still have a relationship where he could leave a note like that for her? Yeah. Um, it's just... <laughs> He still speaks to the kids on FaceTime every night. Yeah. Um, and he has the kids two nights a week. Yeah. He's still their dad. Like, he yeah. just doesn't yeah, want to be part of with me anymore. And then it's just upsetting yeah. because she's an emotional person like yeah. what I am. And then I can't be with her at school when she's this upset. And it breaks my heart to hear that she's crying all day, like, at yeah. school when yeah. I'm not with her. Of yeah. course. And we do know it will gradually, gradually get better. Lisa, Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking Hang my call. There. I appreciate Hang it. There. Can I get another Maggie hug? <laughs> Oh, so good. Can we okay. order three Maggie hugs, please? <laughs> yes. So the new podcast, The Good Enough Dad, with the first three episodes featuring Hamish Blake, is out now. Listen to it wherever you get your good podcast. We love you, Maggie. You've been uh, we've had a great relationship with you over the years. We will continue yeah. that into the future. But thank you for your love time. It. Love you guys. Thanks, thank Maggie. Pleasure to meet you. Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.